Welcome to Planetary Calendar's 2022 Annual Astrology Forecast. I'm Ralph Demetrius, one of the calendar's astrologers, together with Lonnie Demetrius. In this video, we're going to discuss what's happening for the United States in 2022. In another video, we'll discuss the global picture, including the major eclipses, with a special focus on England and the monarchy. Look for that video in time for the 2022 Chinese New Year, which happens on February 1st. We strongly recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Planetary Calendar Astrology. That way you can get our weekly video forecast and our educational astro portraits. We also suggest that you get the 2022 Planetary Calendar. Why, besides the fact that we love when you buy our calendars? While this video will give you some ideas about future happenings in the world, the calendar will give you daily insights about how the planets are affecting you. You can find the various versions at planetarycalendar.com. Also, when you subscribe to the YouTube channel, remember to click the bell so you'll get notified when the new videos go online. And now, the forecast. Now, Lonnie's behind the camera, and you're going to hear her chime in now and then because we've been looking at these charts together since September, and it's now November, and you would wonder, why did it take us so long? Because 2022 is a very complicated year. Now, because we were astrologers, we were expecting that. And know why? Because back in 2016, we did a long-range forecast. And it was supposed to be a five-year forecast, but it kind of snuck out to seven years. And we forecast that it was going to be a wacky time. 16, 17, 18, 19, they were going to be wacky times. But we really knew that when we got to like 20, and then 1920, it was really going to be rough and it was going to be rough globally, and the economy was going to be very, you know, compressed. Well, for an astrologer, one of the big markers is always the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, yes? When those two big guys get together in the same sign, and they get conjunct, everything kind of, like, locks up for a little bit. Everyone kind of freezes a little bit. And then once they start separating, they kind of set off on a new pathway. Well, this time, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction was going to take place at zero degrees Aquarius. Now, Saturn's external extrovert dynamic position is the Saturn in Aquarius. It's what you'd call the masculine ruler traditionally. It's a very strong position. It's not a strong position for Jupiter. So basically, Jupiter, the planet of expansion, is now under the thumb of the planet of contraction. Mm. Now, it's also an air sign, right? What brings the economy to its, geez, I can't even say to its knees, practically to its ankles, an airborne pathogen, one that affects us globally. Aquarius is the sign of global thinking, the community. It's big. We said at the time that it would really be about 2022 when things would start moving forward again. Okay, things would, you know, it would feel almost normal again. Not quite normal, but it would at least start moving forward again. We wouldn't get stuck. Now, the other thing that we knew was really going to reinforce this is that the sun has a cycle. It's a 22-year cycle. It's in two parts of 11 years each. It, they run a little longer, shorter sometimes, but basically the energy goes up and the energy comes down Right? Solar energy goes up and solar energy goes down. It's over this 22-year period. Halfway through, the poles flip. You know, it happens again. But when the sun energy is high, everyone's energy is high. And when the energy is low, everyone's energy is low. Okay? And typically, real slowdowns in the economy happen when the solar energy is bottoming out. And that happened December 2019. So it's coincidental with the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction. So we knew it was going to be rough. Okay, And we warned people it was going to be rough. We've been warning them since 2016 it was going to be rough. Guess what? We were right. <laughs> Sometimes you wish you weren't. 
So what are the indicators that it's going to get better? Well, normally in the chart, or any big chart, the champion is Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of expansion. And here, all through this conjunction, Jupiter's been under the thumb of Saturn. But we get to the very end of 2021, and in the last days of 2021, Jupiter leaves Aquarius and it enters Pisces, its feminine ruling sign. This is an, an extrovert, but compassionate and responsive position. Jupiter in Pisces is very powerful. And not only is Jupiter in Pisces powerful, Jupiter is moving fast. It covers all of Pisces between January and May, and that actually enters uh, Aries. On May 10th, 2022, it enters Aries. And doesn't Jupiter normally stay in a sign for a year? It stays in the sign for a year. And so this is really fast. This is very fast. And it's going to go forward a little bit, then it's going to station, and it's going to start backing up again. And later in the year, it's going to go back into Pisces again. But Jupiter in Aries is powerful too. Why? Because so many of these big planets right now are in the last signs. You have Pluto and Capricorn. You have Saturn in Aquarius. You have uh, Jupiter in Aquarius moving into Pisces. And you have Neptune in Pisces. So these outer planets are all in the last signs. What's it saying to us? A lot of old paradigms are coming to their end of their cycle. They're in their very mature signs. Well, sometimes we get really mature. It means you're just like that close to retiring and disappearing, you know, departing. Hopefully not too soon for some of us. Or starting over again. Right. There's always a new cycle to and, begin. And that's the whole thing, starting over. It means an old paradigm and a number of areas are going to fade away and new ways of working are going to show up. So Jupiter says, whoa, I'm getting a little bit impatient for this. And it's going to dash through the 12th sign and enter Aries, the first sign. It's the sign of springtime when the sun is in Taurus, the second springtime sign, and the sun is conjunct Uranus. And there's a reason why Uranus is on the cover of the calendar this year. Because Uranus has a tremendous amount of leverage. Uranus is the planet of turning things upside down, getting rid of old paradigms, bringing in new paradigms, right? It's in Taurus, the sign of the environment, of the Earth. Why have we been having so many issues in terms of the environment? Well, of course, you know, climate change is human-caused, but it's coming to a head now. It's really, it's really out there in the open now. And that's the Uranus and Taurus that we've been living with for the last several years. And we're going to be living with in the next several years. So people are becoming aware of it. The thing about Uranus is it's one of the planets that can be seen every now and then. It lives kind of in the background. So Uranus brings up issues that kind of live in the background, but you become aware of it every now and then. Okay, we weren't really noticing until there was a fire up the street. We weren't really noticing until there was a hurricane. And believe me, the hurricane season in 2022, I think, is going to start real early this year. Real early. I think the fire season in California is going to be rough, but I think it's directly proportional to how much energy people put into mitigating it. The thing about the charts this year and what it shows globally is that the United States is really pulling back onto itself. You know, we have been, you know, as they always say, the policemen of the world. You know, we've always been a world leader. Um, if you study history very much, you know that ever since the Second World War, the end of the Second World War, we basically have kept the sea lanes open as part of the Bretton Woods Agreement. You know, most countries have very small navies. They don't spend much on their navies. One of the single biggest expenses a country can, can do. We have 12 aircraft carrier fleets because we keep the, the sea lanes open. This year, the United States is going to really pull back onto itself. You know, that we just, you know, um, they just passed the infrastructure bill. A lot of energy is going to go into restoring us. There's going to be a lot of focus on, we're going to focus on our home. When you look at the charts for the Aquarius New Moon, which is the seed chart for the year, almost everything is below the horizon. Everything's about us. Know who's above the horizon? Uranus. In, in Washington, D.C., 
Iran says right at the descendant, right there in terms of the lawmaking, right there, it's going to overturn a lot of laws. There's going to be a lot of changes. In California, it's up in the eighth house, which means about having power, using the power of change. Now, I have to tell you, California is going to have a lot more fun than the East Coast. California, Washington State, it's going to be a much more creative time for them. On the East Coast, it's going to be about consolidation. A lot of people really focusing on their home. On the positive side, in both places, the idea of working from home is people love it. People love it. People love it, and it's going to continue, and companies love it, and you're going to see this whole pattern continue of people working from home. That Jupiter flying through Pisces means entrepreneurship is going to go through the roof. Ralph, would you look at those planets in Capricorn in the fourth house? Well, on the West Coast, and we do our calendar for the West Coast just to be prepared. It's a West Coast calendar. We have Mars, Vesta. It's an asteroid, a very cute asteroid. Venus, Mercury, Pluto. And Juno, the marriage asteroid, all in the fourth house. There's going to be a real big shift for people working from their homes, and you know, and doing, you know, being ambitious. You know, what are what are we doing for ourselves? We work for these big companies for years. What are we doing for ourselves in terms of the stability of our own home? What are our ambitions? That's what people are going to be saying. Besides, when people work for a big company from home, if they have a secondary business, they can still run it. Because you fill it in different places, you know? I'm working for the other company, I'm doing the laundry, and then I'm taking care of our business. And then I'm working for the other company again. But you can do this because, one, you're not commuting, and you're not taking a lot of time dressing up for, out, you know, for your meetings. You just have to wear the upper part, right? <laughs> so isn't that kind of textbook, you know, Capricorn working uh, in the fourth house in the home? So. Work. Exactly. Yeah. That's classic. Now, what's interesting in California on the West Coast because the line goes through there, you have the moon, the sun, and Saturn in the fifth house. So once again, ambition about technology, about using the internet. And then you have Jupiter in the sixth house with Neptune. So a lot of stuff about well-being and health. Though I expect that like the pharmaceutical firms are going to do really well when Jupiter and Pisces in that first half of the year up until... Um, you know, change a sign. And then later in the year, it's going to go back into Pisces again. Um, the spirits world, and by that, I don't mean the spirits. I mean, <laughs> I mean, alcohol, wine, beer are going to do very, very well. They're going to have a good growth next year. Um, anything that relates to that. Also, anything to do with the ocean. There's going to be a real big push towards, you know, the health of the ocean, especially on the West Coast. So that's going to be global. That's a, a global issue with Jupiter and Pisces. What's so important here to realize is that with so many planets in these later signs, there's this real need. People are going to really be saying, you know, we need to act like adults. You know, you have planets in Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. These are the adult signs. We really have to act like an adult. On the other hand, realize that a lot of these planets are in their latest latest part of the cycle. So over the next, you know, 10 years, as they cycle out of those signs into the newer signs, Aries and Taurus, we really are coming into a whole new way of approaching things. Now, that Pluto and Capricorn is going to continue to be an issue. Pluto and Capricorn is the position of the United States Pluto. We are having a Pluto return. These Pluto's back where it was when we, we started off. Pluto and Capricorn has a lot to do with the pandemic or pandemics generally. And realize, you know, we're not out of the woods with this because the challenge we're having, Pluto has a lot to do with mass, you know, large numbers of people. Uh, the restrictions on that are that come from that and the restrictions in terms of not having enough water, not having enough resources. But Pluto going over the United States, Pluto has to do with really having to address these issues globally, because we are a global leader. Our current population is about 7 billion. According to scientists, the globe, our Earth, to stay healthy, the max it can handle is about 4 billion. So we're heading towards double. And when you look, make a circle around Asia, more people live inside that relatively small circle than live outside of it. So you have this incredible concentration. So these issues of pandemics 
are going to keep rising. The fact that, as I said, Saturn and Jupiter were in an air sign, and this is an airborne pathogen, is the most dangerous type because it transmits so easily. And this is why people have to draw on their Capricorn in their chart uh, to influence the Capricorn in this signature chart to, to be responsible, to help with the responsibility of, of doing what they can to keep the world population safe. I mean, Capricorn is the father energy, you know, so yeah. find the dad in you exactly. that would protect your children. So the, while this first part of the year is going to really seem like it accelerates, things are happening real fast, be aware that in the course of the year, there's going to be hot spots. And the guy doing that is Mars. And this is why. Mars starts off the year in Sagittarius. And in the course of the year, it's going to go through half of the zodiac, from Sagittarius to Gemini. As a result, it's going to go conjunct a whole one planet after another of the big planets. And realize with, with the outer planets, they tend to have issues that they, you know, are near and dear to their heart. So when Mars gets conjunct them, you know, together, it energizes it. So in the course of the year, you're going to see issues shift. Now, what's funny is that the only planet, only the outer planets that really is changing sign this year is Jupiter. It's funny, Saturn, uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, they don't change sign. The only one changing sign this year is Jupiter. So it means in terms of like governmental stuff, the big government stuff, the big systems, the big companies, there's really not going to be much shift. They'll go retrograde and things like that, and they'll be bump into themselves. But there's not going to be a big shift. But Jupiter is a very human planet. It, it's still with all mutable signs. So what's going to happen is What's going to change is how we feel about it. So you're going to see this big tidal shift before the beginning, the first part of the year and the second part of the year between how people feel about it. And then meanwhile, Mars is going to hit these different planets at certain times, kind of setting sparks off. So it's going to be a very, very interesting year. But when you're watching the news, don't get yourself crazy about intransigence among the uh, in the government the fact that things seem to be not moving forward i mean it will seem like there's a really big polarity going on but the reality is when you look at these charts they're just two sides of the same coin i mean both sides of them are are both sides of the argument are basically invested in the same thing stay, keeping themselves in power and that's not going to shift in the course of the year but what is going to shift is how people feel about it. So there's going to be a big shift in public opinion. And it's going to start making inroads in different places. Like people working within the government. You know, the people who are in the rank and file. There's going to be shifts taking place there. Well, and I think that Uranus in Taurus contributes to that. Because what does the government really do uh, that's as important... I guess, as holding the purse strings. And the way that those purse strings are opened or tightened uh, has been under a lot of scrutiny, a lot of change. And I think it is going to change from an old antiquated system into a more modern, light speed, Aquarius kind of a system. Uranus and Taurus is such a big player this year because Uranus is the planet of that which changes old paradigms and to allow new ones to come into place. And Uranus and Taurus is talking about climate change, is talking about hurricanes, is talking about fires, is talking about what we've been doing to the planet and now what the planet is starting to do to us in response. It's also about money, Taurus, money. So it's all about how are we handling money? That's why things like Bitcoin and the other virtual for, you know, currencies are becoming bigger issues. So how we manage money. Uranus taking in terms of how is money used for the common good is dramatically changing too, okay? And the other thing that's changing, and this has been going on for a while, Uranus stays in a sign for about seven years, our conception of beauty, what we consider beautiful, 
has really dramatically changed. And that's the Uranus and Taurus as well. Why does it have so much leverage this year? And the reason is when we look at this ma the major charts, so many of the planets are in the last signs of the zodiac. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. They're all the old guys. They're all settled. They're all, you know, same old, same old. Uranus is in Taurus, one of the springtime signs. I'm not going away. I'm just getting rolling. I'm, I'm not running out of steam. I'm moving ahead full speed ahead. So it's really going to have a lot of leverage. Now, one thing with this Jupiter and Pisces, which is not such a positive thing, expect the Jupiter expansion, Pisces, salt water, could mean that there could be a lot more flooding, ocean flooding. Ocean rise. Yeah, and the IC line runs up through the Caribbean. This is one of the reasons why I said that I think, I think the southeast, Florida, Louisiana, all those states are going to have an early uh, hurricane season and have a particularly difficult one. You know, I think Pisces is a very interesting sign. It's the last sign of the zodiac. So it pulls together all the information that's been gathered through going through all the other signs, whatever planet, you know, finally ends up in there. But it's like a two-sided coin. It can be incarceration. It can be enlightenment. You know, there's so many opposites that apply to Pisces. And because it's the ending sign, it just means that all outcomes are possible. You know, I like that the rulership is Jupiter because it makes it an open-hearted kind of a energy. So hopefully there's leaning more to the positive than to the negative. Mm. Well, the big player this year, you know, are the Saturn and Jupiter because they're both in the ruling signs. So this is why I said that they're two sides of the same coin. You know, both voices this year are really powerful. You know, the conservative, but take care of everybody in the Jupiter expansion, but oh, we should worry about this. They're both big voices this year. This, it's going to be a very strange year in terms of people are very concerned about other people and compassionate about it. And yet, they want to leap beyond it. You know, how can we how can we get past this? Is what you're going to hear a lot. How can we get past this this time? Mars in Capricorn is in exalted position because it connects into Saturn so strongly, and that's going to be stronger. Are we being responsible about ourselves? We've had a concept as um, herbalist for a bunch of years saying, you know, you need to be healthy in self defense. That is going to be so true in the coming years. Because with these continuing, you know, these pathogens appearing upon the planet, you really have to focus on being healthy in protection, your self-protection, and for your family. The other big player this year is that Uranus in Taurus, because it is the angle to the other ones. Everyone else is clustered together, kind of saying, oh, it's been cold out there, and it's been bad out there, let's cluster together. And Uranus is out there saying, you know, the oceans are rising, you know, the earth is on fire, you know... I know you carbon people would like us to just be quiet and go away. Ain't happening. The issues of climate change and people talking about it are going to keep on and on and on as things they start changing the things that people, you know, are going to do for it. How much are they going to do? And once we start going in the correct direction, Uranus will move into Gemini and they'll talk about something else. When Uranus is in the picture, it gives you a little boot to what to prioritize. Uh, later in the year, we're going to be doing one of our long-range forecasts, our seven-year forecast. So keep an eye on that because in the process of doing this, we started looking forward to the charts into the future because you have to know, you know where you came from in order to know where you're going. So remember, you can get your planetary calendar from planetarycalendar.com. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Planetary Calendar Astrology. We do our forecasts every Friday for the coming week, and they're designed to go along with the calendar. We do our portraits, our astro portraits, which are educational every Tuesday. And uh, until next time, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022. Mm -hmm.